Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can play your Android games on PC, if that's something that you want to do. Now, we're going to be running BlueStacks to do this, and I'm also going to be showing you the best settings to run for BlueStacks and the best things you can do to essentially optimize your performance in game. Now, the couple of things you need your PC actual hardware specs to be, so you need a decent CPU, a decent amount of RAM, and also a uh, dedicated graphics card. If you don't have one of these things or you have a less powerful version of one of these things, it will still run, just don't expect it to run super amazing and say like high intensive 3D mobile games or that kind of stuff. But just keep that in mind, having the best PC possible will help a lot. Now, obviously, it's not super intensive, but it's just kind of how it is. Now, I'll leave a link down to BlueStacks down in the description below. We're going to be downloading BlueStacks 5 today, but if you have any issues with BlueStacks 5, because it's really re very recent release, head back and download BlueStacks 4 just by clicking on that link right there if you're having issues with BlueStacks 5. Keep in mind, do that. Uh, but BlueStacks 5 is essentially optimized, apparent, well, according to this, if I click here, sorry, just let me go into it. It's uh, optimized for less RAM usage, faster load times, better app performance, better multitasking, apparently all that stuff. So we're going to try that out and do that today. Just simply hit the download button and download BlueStacks 5. Give it a go. Link will be down in the description. Now, once you've installed BlueStacks 5, here's what I'd recommend doing. Do not launch it through the base BlueStacks app. What I'd recommend doing is actually going into here and typing in BlueStacks and essentially opening up BlueStacks 5 Multi-Instance Manager. This is what I would suggest opening. Simply open that, and what I'd also recommend doing is just going down here and pinning it to your taskbar, which I've already done. So once you've got that, you're going to have your base BlueStacks uh, version. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run you through the process of creating an entirely new instance. So what you can actually do is you can actually have multiple devices of a uh, dummy multiple devices of uh, Android devices set up and you can actually run multiple BlueStacks uh, instances all at once. So you could have like um, uh, a certain game open in one instance and a different game open in a different instance. You could have it like multiple. It depends on how much your computer can handle with the specs you've got in your computer but you can effectively run multiple instances of this. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new instance. Uh, ignore this one that's here. I'm going to go through everything and I'm trying to explain basically how to use it. So you can either, you can clone an existing instance or you can make a fresh instance. Now what cloning an instance does basically just means it's going to take whatever instance you have and just make an exact copy of it and you can make some changes to it obviously as well. But we're going to be creating a fresh instance. Make sure you run the NuGet 64-bit. If you have problems with NuGet 64-bit, run NuGet 32-bit. Uh, but the reason you want to run the 64-bit version is it generally has better performance if your computer supports it, but everything basically supports 64-bit these days. So I just recommend running the 64-bit version. Then what you want to do is you want to allocate your CPU cores. Now, if you have a quad core processor, you're going to want to allocate four cores or less if you have performance issues. If you have a higher core clock processor, you want to going to do more cores. Now you can check this by essentially going into task manager in your PC and going to the performance tab and it's going to tell you what core, how many cores you have in your PC right here. As you can see, I'm running a 3700X and I have eight cores. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to go to custom and I'm going to set this to seven cores to leave some a little bit left over for my PC. I know that's not necessarily necessary, but I'm going to do that just because I run some other applications like OBS and stuff at the same time. Then what you're going to want to do is you want to set your RAM. I believe the maximum amount of BlueStacks at the moment is four gigs. So that's a little bit annoying. Uh, the base BlueStacks 4 allows you to, allows you to allocate more but that's just whatever. So we're also going to be running that version of ARM and then we're going to set this at 240 DPI. I found some games have a problem, some problems at 32 DPI, so just leave it at 240 DPI. That tend to be what works the best for me. Now simply create that and then you've got your new BlueStack instance. And what we can actually do is we can just rename it if we want to as well and we just go new instance or whatever you want to name it. I'm actually going to name it um, MHA TSS, because that's my hero academia, the strongest hero. I'm going to be playing that later uh, on. I'm going to be installing that in this instance and seeing how it runs. So once you've done that, just simply hit start and your BlueStacks instance is going to boot up. Boot up. Now, there are a couple more things we're going to want to do once we get into the instance. And we're going to make some changes to it. I'm just going to full screen this now, guys, uh, once it loads in. And so we've got to see what we can do. 
I apologize for that NVIDIA thing that pops up. It does that sometimes. Alrighty, so I'm just going to go into... Actually, no, we don't want to go into full screen because I need to do settings, never mind. So you want to go up here, this little three lines to the menu, click settings, and this is what we allocated before. Now, if you have a higher refresh rate display, some games do support 120 FPS. So if you want to, you can come down here and check this enable high frame rates and set your... Just drag it across to 120. 144 you can do if you have a 144 hertz display, but it doesn't really matter anyways because most games generally only support 100. 120 sorry not most games the games that the small amount of games that do support high frame rates generally only go up to 120 anyway so you might as well just do that now i personally have it set to 1600 by 900 for the best performance uh, i don't really care about the resolution too much but if you want to you can set the higher resolutions just keep in mind if you are having performance issues try turning down the resolution and that can help solve some problems now we're going to go to graphics i tend to set it to performance uh, if you have some compatibility issues like games crashing a lot set it to compatibility mode um, I tend to set it on OpenGL because I found that works fine if you have an NVIDIA GPU. Uh, either one is fine. Yet again, sometimes it depends on the game. I have the interface renderer set to OpenGL because I'm using OpenGL. And then if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you can set your graphic, uh, this to hardware decoding. I'm not sure about the new AMD GPUs. They might be able to do it as well. Uh, but I'd strongly recommend setting this to hardware decoding if you have the option to do it because it significantly improves performance. And you want to make sure this is checked in the preferred uh, dedicated GPU. You want to make sure that's checked 100%. Then other preference things, it doesn't really matter. This is English language, stuff like that. Uh, you can set up a device settings if you want to change whatever phone it is, uh, which I'm actually just going to set it to... I'm just going to leave it as the default. It, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, it generally doesn't change that much at all. Uh, if you, Some games on the App Store might not let you install it if it thinks it's this phone. If you're having problems installing an app, just set it to like a newer device or something. It really doesn't matter that much though. And then that's basically it. If you ever need to update BlueStacks, simply come here and sit, check for updates. But that's pretty much it. Your games should be running now pretty smoothly. I'd recommend always just booting from the multi-instance manager. Don't just directly boot from there because it's just easier to manage things, especially if you're going to be running multiple instances. So if you're a gacha gamer and you're doing re-rolls, this multi-instance manager makes re-rolling really, really easy. Uh, I have some re-roll guides up for specific games if you want to go look at those. Uh, but yeah, basically that's it. Uh, along the side, you have different volume controls. You can lock the mouse cursor to the window. You can do game controls, so there's on-screen game controls you can do, you can use a controller. Um, this isn't added yet. So personally, uh, if you want some of like the features like the game controller and some things like that, you probably want to go back and install BlueStacks 4 because it has more features at the moment. But if you want better performance, you want to install BlueStacks 5. So it really kind of depends on what kind of thing you want. Uh, and that's really, and then obviously you can sign the Play Store, you can download apps in there and all that kind of jazz. So that's pretty much it guys for this video today. Hopefully you guys found this helpful and enjoyed. Uh, leave a like if you found this helpful. This is basically how you play games in computer with the Android device. So anyways, have a good one guys. See you later.